Okay. Steven, hi, how you doing? Hi guys, how are you doing? I'm good. Oh, good. Do doing great. Looking forward to some of the other ones. Um, I was watching you guys the other day. Uh, thank you very much for uh, not, not banning me or anything. I always try to make sure that I just keep like one or two comments, say how oh, good of a job you guys do, and then just get it. Not really. Yeah, uh, well, affect that listen, listen, Tyler's in charge of the stream and the comments. So, Well, again, I, ne I never want to hijack. You guys do a great job on your mm -hmm. own. All right, so we were talking about Nils Lundqvist. Um, what are some of your thoughts on him? Um, probably one of the most mature 20-year-olds I've seen. Uh, oh, he turned 21 recently, but um, yeah. Um, look, some people might think I'm exaggerating here, but this guy is going to wear a letter for the Rangers in the future. Um, alternate captain on Team Sweden at age 20. Uh, talking to his teammates in Lulia, he was a leader on the team. Um, you know, players like Gustafsson, who played in the NHL, they look to him for leadership. And this guy is now in New York, ready to go. He was supposed to come over uh, last year, but the pandemic affected that, unfortunately. Um, look, I think he's ready to step in. And uh, he's, he's going to start on the third pairing, even strength-wise. But I think he's going to get some decent power play minutes. Um, I don't think Gerard Galland is the coach that will have power play unit number two on the ice for only five seconds. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm very excited for this. I've been I've been looking forward to this moment for three years. Is Panarin going to be okay with that? Because I think on all of his highlights, he's playing in that air, that spot that Panarin plays on. Yeah. So uh, the the first power play unit will probably have Fox, Panarin, Zabanajad, uh, Kreider, and then. I personally hope it's going to be Lafreniere, but maybe Gallant hold, holds on to Strom there on the on the right side. Um, and then the second unit is where Lundqvist will probably slot in either in Panarin's spot uh, for that one-timer that he's so good at, or they're going to have him run the power play like Adam Fox does. Um, so we'll, we'll see what happens there. Um it's also interesting to see who the other defenseman is who's going to make the team. Um, it's probably going to be Miller, but you never know. Uh, I mean, Philip Heedle spent a couple of weeks in Hartford after he was an NHL regular the, the, the season prior. So it's going to be interesting. And, and development camp has shown really good glimpses of especially Braden Schneider. Um Zach Jones, of course, already has NHL experience. Matthew Robertson is making a really good impression. It's going to be tough for Gerard Gallant to figure out which six defensemen he's going to go with. I'm pretty sure. Thing, it, one thing I know for sure is not going to be Hayek. Now, so. um, also, what other like forwards might be somebody that we're not talking about? Payunemi, mm -hmm. I know you talk about. I know you guys talk about Ryder Korsak. So, um, who else? Uh, to to make the team or or just like, to impress whatever. Um, I think to make the team. When we look at forwards, I, everyone's talking about Morgan Barron, but I think Morgan Barron's ideal role would be on the third line. So unless we have an injury or a player is traded away, I don't really see that happening. I think the player that the forward that might make the team that people are not expecting is Justin Richards. Um, okay. He's a very mature two-way uh, two forward, uh, plays a little bit like Dominic Moore, can center the fourth line. Um, he's, going to, he's going to battle for that fourth line center spot with Kevin Rooney, and I wouldn't be surprised if he wins that battle. All right. All right. Uh, Anthony, do you have any questions? Yeah, so, Stephen, um, <clears throat> and rightfully so, Ranger fans could be high on Nils Lundqvist. Um, he looks like he's going to be a good player. Mm -hmm. But I just want to ask you about um, – he wasn't a Ranger, but David Runblad, you know, played in the Swedish Elite League. He had 50 points in 55 games his last mm -hmm. year there. Uh, yeah. As you know, first-round pick, he was highly touted. He was in the trade for Kyle Taris. Um, and then uh, he was nothing in the NHL. And then, you know, Tim, Tim Erickson, who was a Ranger prospect, another Swedish defenseman who, you know, Ranger fans were excited about. Um, and he didn't pan out either. So – what what's the difference between Nils Lundqvist and David Runblad? You know, is it possible that you know that that could happen to Nils Lundqvist, or mm -hmm. is he just far and away better than David Runblad? 
Look, there, there's always there's always the chance that a player comes over and doesn't adjust well. Um, it's I think fans usually underestimate the, the changes a player goes through. Uh, Nils Lundqvist is 21, so it's different compared to Capo Kako, who was 18. But still, moving from Europe, Sweden, Finland, Russia, Czech Republic to North America is a big is a big step. You know, you're leaving everything behind. You're moving to a country where you don't speak the language, where you speak the language, but it's not your language. Um, and simple chores like where do I get ibuprofen for my headaches become become a challenge. Um, <laughs> and and I think people underestimate that because when you are in in a strange country, and uh, we saw it with Shiposhov in in uh, Vegas, right? And he was mm-hmm. 27 or 28 at the time. He had a situation where his son was sick in the middle of the night and they were trying to find a doctor, but they couldn't. And they they were driving around for two, three hours until they finally found a police officer that spoke Russian that was able to help them. That is something that you don't really think about, but it's 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 a challenge that that, you know, if you don't have someone with you who can guide you through those moments, hopefully they don't happen. But if it does happen, that can be a challenge. So you never know how a player adjusts to life in a different country. Um, but if I have to compare Nils Lundqvist to David Rundblad and Tim Erickson, the big difference is that Nils Lundqvist at the base is a good defenseman. If you take away all the points, if you take away all the, all the offensive production, Nils Lundqvist is still a good shutdown defenseman in the Swedish Hockey League. He played in a shutdown role. He is the, the guy that the team counts on to, to uh, uh, defend the lead in the final minute of a game. Rundblad and Eriksson were never that. They were more, you know, they were just like, like Rafi Diaz type players, you know, yeah. just there to provide the offense. Good puck-moving defensemen, but not really the type of players that, that you trust in the final minute of a game to, to, to protect the lead, to, 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 to get you that win. And Niels Lundqvist did that. That's how he started. The offense only came later. So Niels Lundqvist is a much more complete defenseman compared to those two. Okay. The other question and, I want to ask you is, I know, sorry. obviously, for you're a Ranger fan, but I know you, being that you seem to know a lot about players in the Swedish Elite League, um, I want to ask you, what, do you, what are your thoughts on, or do you know much about the Islander Swedish defenseman, Robin Salo? Um, I mean, he had, he had uh, two less points than, uh, than Niels Lundqvist. Um, He's six foot, 185 pounds. I know Islander fans are excited for him. Do you know much about him? Um, yeah, he's Finnish. He's, he's not Swedish, but um, uh, it's. I mean, it's 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 fine. It's 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 the same region of yeah. Europe. Uh, <laughs> now, um, Robin, yeah, Sano, that, that comment won't get us in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I always respond when people refer to Finland as Scandinavia because technically it isn't. But mm. um, <laughs> anyway, Robin Salo, Finnish defenseman, uh, good prospect. I don't think he's on that same level as Niels Lundqvist. If you'd have to compare him to a Rangers prospect, it's he's probably closer to a um, uh, Zach Jones, Matthew Robertson in terms of upside. You know, right. it's, it's good third pair. A third pair defenseman with second pair upside. Um, where, whereas I think Nils Lundqvist on this team, on this Rangers team, I think what the Rangers have here is a Nashville Predators type situation where years ago the Nashville Predators had a, had a defense with Roman Yossi, uh, Shea Weber, Ryan Ellis, and Matthias Ekholm. Yes. They basically had two top pairings on defense. Yes. Um if the Rangers can can stick with with Lindgren and Fox on, on the first pair, and then Truba, I, I still think they're going to move on from Truba in 2024 when his no move clause expires. If by then you would have Lundqvist on the second pair with either Miller or Robertson or Jones, or maybe they pair uh, Schneider with Lundqvist. There is some versatility there. Um, you would have a similar situation where the Rangers have a second pair that on most teams would be a top pair. And that's what the hope is going to be, especially with they're they're loaded with defensive draft picks, um, yeah. and and just talent. Uh, I'm going to leave you with uh, two quick questions, and then uh, we're going to do our our Q and A and let you go. Um, first, 
what exactly is going to be the fate of the guys that don't make this team? The Matthew Robertsons, the uh, uh, Zach Jones, let's say it's them. Are they just simply going to Hartford? That's it. Uh, some of the guys still have junior eligibility. Um, well, guys like Jones, uh, like Zach Jones went to college. So exactly. Yeah. The, yeah. the moment he signed his entry level contract, that's it. He, you cannot go back to college once you're a professional hockey player. But you can so, go to the AHL. Is he just going to go at Hartford yeah, so, and be after so that? If, I still think there's going to be a battle for that for that spot on the left side. I think Lindgren and Nemeth are are locks to make the team. They signed Nemeth, you know, he's a veteran presence. Lindgren is is, is on, I mean, no one's going to dispute Lindgren making the team. Nope. So that that third spot on the left is going to be up for grabs. I know Keandre Miller played there last season. I don't think Keandre Miller has reached that level yet where he's an undisputed starter on the team. It's, it's his spot to lose, but he can still lose it. So it's either going to be Miller, Robertson, or Jones. Reunanen, I don't think he's good enough to beat out all those, all three of those. Um, but if Jones and Robertson don't make it, they're going to play in the AHL. Um, technically, Robertson is still eligible to play in the WHL. But in juniors, teams have a limit of three players age 20 and over. So teams don't really have room for a lot of 20-year-olds in, in juniors. I also think Robertson has nothing left to learn there. So they will start in Hartford. Down the line, if they cannot make the team, they're unfortunately going to be victims of the rebuild. And they're going to be traded either for a pick or maybe for a similar player in a different position. Um, I've always said uh, the, the name Rasmus Kupari popped up a couple of minutes ago in the chat. Yeah. I've always said Matthew Robertson for Rasmus Kupari is a trade that, that benefits all parties involved. The LA Kings can really use a defenseman like Matthew Robertson. The Rangers have the left side covered with Miller and, and Jones for the future. Kupari is a center prospect the Rangers desperately need. He's played with Kako in, in uh, at the under-18 World Championship, so they have that, that chemistry, that history too. Um, so it's 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 a situation that will be a trade that works for all parties involved. Um, if if they if they don't make the team, that's just that's where they're going to end up. They're going to be traded to another team. But that's that I'm yeah. You could say that is disappointing to see players leave, mm -hmm. but unless the NHL increases the number of players, active players to twenty plus two goalies, you're not going to see more than six defensemen on the team. So yeah. Um, and then lastly, uh, all the reports, Capacaco has now put on some more size. Uh, you think this is finally the year we're going to see him truly break out? Um, well, I think Capacaco had a, had, had a, had a strong season. I wouldn't call it a breakout season because the offense wasn't there yet. And that's what people ultimately will look at. But the, the strides he made from year one to year two were amazing. Um, he was ranked, I think top 10. Uh, in defensive metrics among forwards in the NHL. He was in the same ballpark as guys like Mark Stone in terms mm -hmm. of defense. So that part of the game is really difficult to learn. If, if he can do that at age 20 already, I'm very hopeful for this upcoming season. Uh, he has had a very productive offseason. He, uh, he worked out with several NHL players, including uh, Miko Rantanen, which Pierre, Pierre Maguire... Uh, pronunciation um, and uh, it's just the offense that, that that needs to get there now I also think under Gallant he will have a little bit more freedom he will be a little bit more at ease um, he had an interview yesterday uh, in Turku um, with a TPS uh, podcast and one of the things he said was that uh, you know he one of the things he didn't understand is that some players, when they make a mistake, they get benched, and other players, when they make a mistake, nothing happens. It's a it's a little bit of a dig still towards David Quinn, but that mm -hmm. that's one of the, that's one of the issues that the Rangers had on this team. You know, the it, it rules for thee, but not for not for me. That 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 kind of attitude. I don't think we've been saying too often in this world we live in right now. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and it's it's just it's it's frustrating for the players as well because they they don't understand why like especially a kid like Kako whose first language is in English, so the explanation he gets from coaches it's already 
it's, it's you already have a language barrier there. And then you see players who play far worse than you in a game, and they, they're out there defending lead. They're out there on the power play on a penalty kill. And you have a puck bounce off your stick and you're benched for the last eight minutes of the game. It's 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 confusing. So under Gerard Gallant, I don't see that happening. I think this is going to be the year where Kako really gets his offense together. Um, uh, but it's also because of the Rangers being a more complete team. Mm-hmm. Lafreniere is a year older. And let's also not forget all the drama we had last season. It was a season that lasted five months, but the Rangers had more drama than most NHL teams experience in a decade. You've, yeah. had, you've had fights in the locker room. You've had your best center out with COVID for six weeks. Then you had uh, Shestjorkin with that freak groan injury. You had a Russian reporter going after Panarin. Then you had your coach missing time because of COVID. So you get replacement coaches behind the bench. And all of a sudden it clicks and you score nine goals against Flyers. <laughs> Then, yeah, then, then, then your most physical players, Lindgren, Kreider, Truba, are out with injuries, and then the Wilson incident happens. And then a couple of days later, your team uh, releases a statement, and your general manager and president are fired before the season's even over. And I'm not oh, sure. Did you, did you even mention D'Angelo in that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the locker room fights. Yeah, the, the, the D'Angelo, locker room D'Angelo, fights. D'Angelo, and, uh, and then a war with a Ranger blog. I mean, how many teams – Deal with stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, but but like I said, a normal NHL team usually has this much adversity spread out over a decade, and we had it in a five oh. month span. Yeah. So, so by, by not having all that, plus a new coach, plus your young stars being a year older, plus your third pairing going from Johnson and Beteto to Nemeth and Lundqvist. Yeah. Uh, this team is already, even without Buchnevich, this team is a better team than they were last season. And I'm going to agree with you on that one because it's going to be a hell of a season, and hopefully we can give uh, Anthony's Islanders a good scare. I can't believe I thought I'd ever say it. I still think the Islanders gonna, are going to finish ahead of the Rangers. I think the Hurricanes are going to finish first in the division, Islanders second, Capitals third, and I think the Rangers will finish ahead of the Penguins. By the way, if you haven't seen it, we had our power rankings done last week. Um, I was actually one of the people that still have the Hurricanes up ahead, although I don't love their goaltending. I had the Rangers um, and the Penguins. Phil didn't. But I... Right. Yeah, That's where... the, the, the Hurricanes haven't had good goaltending since, well, I guess the goalie before Cam Ward. Um, uh, they, Arturo Zerbe? They, they, they haven't had good goaltending in the salary cap era. Yes. But their However, defense, their their defense makes up for it. You don't need an elite goaltender if your defense takes away high danger scoring chances. Yeah, I mean the Nedeljkovic gave him good goal. I mean the guy was a finalist for the Calder, so he, their goaltending situation was a lot better in years past. Last year, yeah, but but I mean Steve Mason won a Calder. I mean the, the Calder for <laughs> once once goalies are if goalies are in the conversation for the Calder, it means that there's not enough good rookies to uh, yeah. To be to be in uh, to be uh, in, in consideration, and not not anything against Djokovic, but like I said, the Hurricanes haven't had a good goalie in at least fifteen years, and somehow they still made it to the final four a couple of years ago uh, because their defense is just top notch. They have Jacob Slavin, they have uh, I almost wanted to say Joe Pesci, Brett oh. Pesci. Oh, by the way, I forgot who they beat to get to the final four. Um. It would have to be. It would have to be a team that got that swept the first time ever. A team won a, an overtime game seven, and beat a team that swept someone in the first round, and then swept that team. So that would be the. Oh yeah, I remember it was a yeah. sweep. Of- I, I had to. I had to get a. I had to get a jab at Anthony, and he realized that too. All right, Steve. So uh, we're gonna just take a couple questions to get out of here. But thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, You're Steve. Welcome. Oh, oh. By the way, what time is it in Ireland? Uh, it's 10 25 p.m. 10 25. That's a it's true early. joining us at it's, 10 25. It, and... It's still early. Um, I'm, I'm happy I'm only five hours ahead of you guys now because in Vienna it was six, which means I can watch the Ranger games at midnight instead of 1 a.m. By the way, did you ever listen to the Billy Joel song Vienna? No, I'm, I'm more of a fan of the Ultra Song Vox Vienna, uh, Ultra, Ultra Fox Song Vienna. All right, I'll have to. You, I'll you, have know, to you know, Ultra Fox, right? 
No, no. I'll, yeah, I'll send I'm, it in I'm, our group chat. I'm going to share that song with you. It's. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's people listening here who go, oh, yeah, that's a good song. Okay. All right. Great. Look All forward right. to hearing it. All, All right. right. And, uh, I, of course, watch Steven on Wardy NHL and the Rangers Review Show. Yeah. Again. Oh, and, um, oh. yeah, uh, quick. Uh, yesterday I published my Ryder Korzak interview. Nice. Um, Is that and, on the channel or where do we find that? No, no, no. It's uh, it's it's. I share it on 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 Twitter. Um, it's on foreverblueshirts.com. Uh, okay. Part of the prospect interview series, and the interview that Capo Caco gave today. If you go to my Twitter page, you can find a transcript. I, everything's translated from Finnish to English. Okay, that's fantastic. We had nothing better to do today. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Again, Stephen, thank you very much. Thanks, All Steve. Right. Okay. So can't wait to actually get to see a Ranger game with you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so by the way, we're going to take some Q and a today. It's going to be a fast show today. Uh, if you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.